Welcome back. Let's uh, continue by adding some color information to a particle cloud. So, start by selecting a point cloud and from the materials menu choose ice particle volume. And uh, let's play back the animation for a couple of frames so we actually have some some uh, particles submitted. Press 7 to open nice tree and uh, open the preset manager uh, to set a color we need a node called particle gradient and we'll connect it to the per gradient color input of the particle render node this node allows us to do all sorts of stuff uh, to our particles based on its uh, density or its age or, or the particle velocity and so on. Since a typical dust cloud doesn't contain all that much color information, we're only going to use the particle or the cloud's density and uh, the particle age to uh, set the colors. And the first value is the per uh, cloud density control. And this part enables you to set a color based on the density of the cloud, whereas uh, this part allows you to set the color based on, on uh, the particle's age or percentage of its uh, age. Start by uh, setting the gradient starts at T1 and uh, switch to, to uh, the gradient tab. If I draw a render region, So where the cloud is dense, the left uh, part of the gradient will be used and where the cloud isn't as dense, the colors on the right side will be used. And the same goes for the particle age. So if we just disable that and uh, increase the particle age influence, The particles are born with the color on the left side of the gradient and uh, it will change color throughout its lifespan or lifetime and uh, it will reach the right side of the gradient as, uh, as it dies. Since we're also changing the transparency of the particles throughout its life, uh, we will hardly or it will be just about impossible to, to see the actual color change at uh, the later half or the last part of its life. So we can compress uh, the gradient uh, so the particle will have uh, completed the color shift during half of its lifetime. The intensity then controls uh, how much influence each of these attributes will have on the, on the final color of the particle cloud. So let's set this to something like uh, 0.7 and uh, 0.5. So the color on the right controls the edge or the rim of the particle and uh, the color uh, at the end of its life. So set this to uh, brownish uh, tint of some sort and the mark on the left controls the center of the particles and uh, the birth color so set it to uh, brownish some somewhat darker than uh, than a birth color Okay, let me uh, open the render tree again and let's uh, start working on the particle density. The cell shape will control the overall uh, billowing or fluffiness of the cloud. So let's uh, change the scale to about 18.
and the intensity obviously controls the intensity of uh, of the cell shader probably go back and forth between different values in, in uh, the particle shaper but uh, let's start with uh, something like 0 0.8 uh, to begin with switch to the fractal shape tab and uh, start by increasing the intensity to 1 and change the scale to uh, 25 we also want to add some uh, valleys or furrows to, to the cloud so set the furrow width to uh, 0.75 we also need to decrease the softness uh, to see the actual valleys so set it to 0 0.1 If your goal is to create a, a lighter and a fluffier cloud, you probably want to increase the softness again and uh, possibly lower the width and uh, perhaps take down the intensity a bit as well. But we're aiming for the opposite, so we'll uh, add another level of uh, detail on top of this. So open the render tree again and uh, and let's uh, open the particle shaper compound let's add uh, another fractal node You won't see any change to the render tree yet because uh, we have to activate the operator as well and by default doesn't do anything so let's change the operation to multiply and uh, open the property page what we want to achieve with this node is to add some more details to the rim or to, to uh, the edges of uh, the particles. So let's start by uh, switching the noise type to turbulence and increase the recursion level to uh, 3. And then we're switching back to the color tab and uh, we want to switch the colors as well. And we want to decrease the minimum to the about compound consists of the, of the standard cell to and uh, fractal five. nodes, but and then uh, it's just the easier and, and quicker to, to, to use the compound five. rather than uh, cre create uh, all the nodes uh, from scratch. And this will really increase the contrast of the shader, so we can start to to see all the fine details in in the rim or in the edges. Of and the connect it to the input file. Switch to input. the texture support tab and uh, change the scale to about twenty or so as well. And this will enhance the level of detail in the in the shading at at the rim. What that just if we want uh, even more detail or variation to the cloud, we can of course add uh, even more fractal nodes or cell nodes to uh, and changing the operation to uh, either multiply or subtract or add, depending on whether you want to subtract from the cloud or, or add to it so the last part is to uh, tweak the overall density of the cloud and this is done by the volume density or the global density of the particle render node and this controls the density for the entire cloud
the other value is the density limit and this controls the density per particle if we change this value to say 0 0.2 you'll see that we're changing the density per particle rather than for the entire cloud another important attribute to uh, for controlling the density is uh, the contrast amount and the contrast center and uh, that concludes the tutorial